atop the Himalayas, highest mountain ranges of the world, at 14,200 feet in Himachal Pradesh, India, lies a sky-soaring settlement, very much attached to its roots, the village of Kibber. Nestled in this pithy valley, the most unfriendly of terrain, where even the grass thinks twice before deepening its roots, lies this tiny speck of endurance and bravery of the human spirit. Ice-melting glaciers continue to shape this land as they embark on their long journey to the sea. At first glance, the village throws so many shades of brown at the eye that it's impossible to absorb them all. Kibber has a population count of around 400 people, forming a closely knit community, sharing warmth and resources. The high altitude and geographical location of Kibber results in high wind velocities and cold winters in the region. In Kibber, the sense of time and day has a new meaning. The summer comprises of their days, full of energy, outdoors, while the winters tuck them into their houses for the frosty nights that await. The history of the region unfolds dramatically. The inhabitants of Kibber once lived on the low-lying, more hospitable parts of the Spiti Valley. But constant attacks by Mongols and raiders made it difficult to survive in a region of limited resources. Thus abiding by their strategy, flight rather than fight, they moved and resettled in the region that we called Kibber. Setting on a higher altitude region didn't solve their problems completely. A set of strategic planning of access and streets of the village was yet to be put in place. The people of Kibber used a patch of abrupt depression in the area as their dry moat. This blocked the settlement from the south and the high altitude terrain guarded them from yeah. the north. Restricting entries and strategic monitoring protected them from human attacks. But now, they needed mechanisms to protect them from the attacks of nature. Buildings faced the south sun and were staggered such that each of them get their share of solar heat to keep warm. Orientation and shape of buildings is much dependent upon the prevailing wind directions as not much flora is available to act as buffer. Tracing the land, its lines, its texture, its color, the cattle roams, rolls and rejoices the bounties of it. Like a child trying to cleanse his skin with the mud as its natural sanitizer, playing fearlessly and aimlessly just for the joy of it. Animals and humans share such a deep symbiotic relation on this land that the survival of one without the other is unimaginable. Climbing uneasy slopes, sustaining harsh climate and winds, they look past the dreads of the site and lay the foundations for optimism in the world. Every glance at the site brings back a deep scintillating memory of colourful flags dancing in the music of the wind, proclaiming the essence of the village, the religion of Buddhism. The meditating hyming sounds fill the valley as completely as the oxygen in the air. Twenty-one stupas two temples and a memorial dot the village.
The agrarian community of Kibber is largely a self-sufficient entity. They cultivate and nurture farmlands during the summer months and store their produce for the long winters. Like most agrarian communities, farming in Kibber is also a family event, wherein the elders put in their expertise and the kids their energy into what seems to be the single most important task at hand. Due to this vast amount of time and enthusiasm spent on farming, it also becomes the major congregation space of the village. Working as a community out in the sun for resource accumulation for the village is more than enough incentive for people to talk and mingle. Another congregation space is the undesired green field of the village school. This patch of green is the one chosen for panchayats and talks than the designated panchayat building located adjacent to it. As sunflowers reaching out to their source of heat and warmth, the people naturally chose whatever sunlit open space they find as their sit-out space. As the winters are long and harsh, the thermally insulated dwelling is the most crucial of all construction activities. The dwellings are two-storied mud buildings with functions and usages clearly segregating the two flows into summer and winter usages. The ground floor is for the cattle and its fodder. The cozy space of warmth dissipating from the animals is shared by the human inhabitants as they cuddle together in a symbiotic relation to sustain the cold winters. This alters the use of space over time. 
The first floor of the house is the main living space comprising the kitchen, dining and sleeping areas. This floor, unlike the ground floor that has essentially no windows, has small windows providing for light and ventilation. Additionally, there is a courtyard on the first floor as the floor is mainly used during the summer. Like every other thing in life, architecture is routed in the culture of the place and its people. Kibber has a traditional practice that shapes family organization and thus the architecture and space. After marrying the son, his new wife and his parents build a new home and resettle, leaving the old one behind as an obsolete building used only for storage purposes. They continue living in this new family haven till the son fathers a child. At this point in the family history, the parents of the son go back to their old house. This cyclic tradition goes on and on and is attributed the expansion and architectural growth of Kibber. It's customary for the second child of the house to leave the village and service the monastery. This prohibits division of farming land and the population argumentation. As architects of their own houses, they use local materials and local building techniques to make best of their resources to fulfill their spatial needs. Earth is abundant and is the primary material used in walls and flooring. Timber, less common in the area, is used for purlins and rafters, in roof and frames, lintels and sills of openings. Farming leftover is used as insulation material on roof and on the wall surfaces to prevent the snow from damaging the building. The new buildings use concrete frames as structure, concrete blocks as wall infills and eye sections as primary beams, deeply trying to amalgamate new technology with the old building traditions. Time slows flows, strolls and stops, gives you a window of opportunity to take in as much amazement and beauty as your eyes can hold. In comparison, the world is spinning so fast that Earth itself overlooks the frozen time zones that this region breathes. It's like the blooming of a flower. Its face can't be seen, but only felt, emotionally, spiritually, and humanly.